uh, the French sociology uh, of Emile uh, Durkheim uh, and his school was from very beginning linked to the studies of ethnical problem and archaic society. The last book of Emile Durkheim was dedicated to the Australian uh, religions and Australian archaic societies and um, uh, the disciples of Durkheim also um, were very interested in the studying archaic society. That was idea, that was development of um, a basic idea of a military game concerning, concerning uh, uh, understanding of the society as a whole, organic whole, uh, that distributes the roles, the statuses, the uh, functions uh, among the members of the society. If we have uh, archaic society, this um, we are dealing with the system of archaic distribution of these functions. If we are dealing with modern society, we are dealing with modern system of uh, the distributions. But the concept of individual, the individual that is in the center of the modern society, or the concept of the person or social mask that is in this uh, main identity in the archaical society, both uh, uh, are in, uh, in, in the society itself. So, not the individual form the society, but society for individual or different kind of uh, identity. That was main idea of Durkheim, and for Durkheim, religion in the pre-modern society uh, and the sacred, uh, something sacred, uh, was the same as ideology or philosophy or rational organization was in the modern society. So, uh, Durkheim, uh, Emile Durkheim introduced a kind of sociological relativism in the study of uh, different kinds of, of society that was um, used by ethno-sociologists -so uh, continuing uh, its uh, intuitions uh, of your game. That was a case of English uh, representatives of uh, social anthropology that um, interpret, interpreted uh, Durkheim in, and his sociology in this way. But that was also uh, the main inspiration for direct uh, disciples of Durkheim as Marcel Moss uh, or Henri Hubert, uh, who were uh, famous sociologists and at the same time uh, um, specialist uh, in the anthropological um, uh, and anthropology and anthropological uh, studies that uh, uh, made very important ethno sociological researches uh, of archaic cultures. And um, uh, for Durkheim, uh, the ethnic, ethnic group, archaic group, was group uh, with domination of sacred. So uh, sacred was most, more, more important than profane and modernity is a kind of a profane society um, uh, without sacred. So uh, uh, the, the, the importance of the uh, uh, French sociology for ethno-sociology consists also in, in, in the fact that um, thanks to uh, 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 Duchesne we could um, uh, interpret the ethnic, uh, ethnic group and its value norms uh, as uh, some rational, rational um, complex that could be compared with the other rational and functional uh, complexes 
and uh, to um, base on that uh, correct and um, pluralistic um, studies of uh, archaic cultures. The um, main representative of this sociological uh, Durkheimian school was Marcel Moss. Marcel Moss, uh, who developed idea of, of his uh, teacher, um, Emil Durkheim. And uh, uh, Marcel Moss uh, occupied um, was interested, Marcel Moss was interested by um, archaic society and by the economy of the gift. For Marcel Moss, the most important feature of the archaic culture or ethnic culture is the balance of gift giving and gift receiving. So, the, the most important idea of Moss was idea of stability of the archaic society uh, when the exchange is always strictly zero-sum operation. So, uh, exchanges, uh, ex the exchanges of the gifts is based on reciprocity. Uh, you give and you receive the same quantity. It could be uh, simple patterns for that. You give something, you receive something equal, not equal by a material measure, but e e uh, socially equal, that is considered by the society as equal. And that could be little or with no important gifts, for example, uh, wolf's teeth, that were a kind of symbolic uh, gift between the people that served for nothing, completely useless, not so aesthetically attractive. The, 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 um, uh, the dance of, 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 the, of, of the wolves, uh, but they were considered to be the signs of mutual recognition. So, uh, this, the, these, uh, these circulation of, uh, of some object in the society or between the society was considered to a kind of process that shouldn't enrich um, anyone, but uh, shouldn't uh, empower uh, em uh, uh, poverty, empower uh, anyone also. So it is a kind of zero sum game. So you give and you receive the same quality. Uh, when uh, Marcel Moss studied how the uh, different uh, uh, representatives of archaic society understand this process. They explain to, to him that, that, that there is a kind of secret and sacred power in the gift. And if you receive too much gift, this power, this force begins to destroy a uh, person. So it is necessary to uh, give something back to balance, uh, uh, to control this power that should circulate it through the population or uh, in inner circles of, of the tribes, uh, tribe or between tribes, but it should be always equal. You give and you receive the same quantity. If you have, uh, have something more than that, you should destroy that ritually at the origin of the sacrifice. So, uh, vic uh, the vic you, uh, you, you should make sacrifice and to destroy that ritually. So, uh, that is an um, uh, explanation why the traditional or, or archaic society uh, don't uh, accept something new. Or something new because new is a, a kind of destruction of the balance. If there is something new, some new object, or some, some new ritual, or some new belief, or some new spirit or God, it, is, uh, it introduces a kind of disbalance, uh, the kind of catastrophe, the collapse in the uh, organic 
system of uh, the society. This idea of the importance of the gift, gift giving and receiving and zero sum process of any exchange in the society, it includes uh, exchange of the gifts, of the um, objects, of, of, of the uh, of the animals, of the words also, because uh, by the words the people exchange between themselves also this kind of force. So uh, you give uh, the word, you receive the word. So you give the women in the society, you receive the women from the other clan. So it's a kind of reciprocity of gifts uh, and zero sum. That was the basis of the stability of archaic culture and the main principle and main law of archaic culture. That was developed by uh, other um, sociological uh, author, uh, French uh, sociologist uh, Georges Bataille, who has written the book uh, development, Developing Ideas of Marcel Mauss on Gift or uh, La Partie Maudie, Damned, Damned Path, uh, that was dedicated uh, that necessity to destroy something that uh, uh, could be produced uh, over the measure in such or such conditions in the society as a sense of equality uh, of this uh, balance of, of the gift. So, it, uh, based, based on this idea of the zero-sum uh, process in the exchange, was based uh, uh, the concept of Georges Bataille uh, or the just society, or not only um, as a form to explain the ancient or archaic society, but also a kind of new communist or socialist project to create society on the justice, basing on the justice, so on zero sum, uh, sum of uh, gift, uh, uh, the object uh, giving and receiving. So, uh, very important, other important um, representative of French sociological school also dealing with uh, archaic culture and uh, uh, social anthropology was Henri Hubert, uh, that uh, was co-author with Marcel Mauss of many uh, sociological books. And um, Henri Hubert um, dedicated uh, some text on religious time and archaic society uh, as Mayor Fortes, so that uh, was also very important, um, uh, important author. Um, studying the memory and the time. Uh, the uh, very uh, important point in the development of uh, application of sociological methods of the Urkheimian school to the ethnic or archaic culture so was the case of Lucien levy Brule also the sociologist, uh, famous uh, French sociologist, that tried to explain the difference between pre-modern society and modern societies basing on the different attitude toward reality. Uh, according to Levi, Levi Brühl, in the archaic culture there uh, uh, wasn't a locus, a uh, rational attitude to uh, the nature, to the cosmos. And the main principle on which the attitude uh, to uh, the ambience was based was uh, mystical participation. That was the term that for Levi Brühl uh, characterized uh, this, the essence itself of the pre-modern attitude toward uh, uh, life, the ambience. And uh, uh, modern society as uh, modern society were built on the principle of uh, rationality and absence of mystical uh, uh, participation. That was the main feature of modernity, that kind of sep uh, uh, separation from the whole, 
uh, the uh, separation between subject and object, the man and the nature. Uh, at absence, uh, so absence of this um, of this um, part, uh, mystical par uh, participation. So uh, there were uh, also uh, important ethno ethnologists, uh, Marcel Griel, uh, that studied the mythology of uh, African people, Dagon, um, Maurice Lingard that uh, studied uh, um, what it was the concept of person and what was the ontological status of myth in the archaic society, uh, or Marcel Granet, also a so sociologist, who studied Chinese society with sociological and eth ethnological uh, uh, instruments. But uh, the turning, really turning point in this ethno-sociological uh, tendencies in main French sociological tradition uh, was uh, Claude Lévi-Strauss. Claude Lévi-Strauss that is uh, founder of uh, structuralist anthropology and one of the best known author um, of 20th century uh, and famous anthropologist and sociologist. The main uh, idea of Levi-Strauss uh, was polemic uh, with levi Brühl. levi Brühl affirmed that there, were, there, is, there are two kinds of uh, um, irreductible societies, pre-modern and modern, and, live, uh, and uh, uh, with the, in, in the pre-modern society there is no logos, uh, rationality, but mystical participation and in, modern, in the modern society there is uh, uh, logical and rational structures that, that uh, predominate. Uh, so, uh, uh, Levi-Strauss argued that it wasn't so, that we are dealing with dealing with the human being, with the human society, we are dealing with logical society, with rational attitude toward life and toward ambience. But there are different kinds of rationalities. So there we could not accept the vision of pre-logical or pre-logical and logical, pre-rational and rational society, but we are dealing, but we are dealing with different rationalities, different log logical society, di different logics. And uh, defending this uh, point, uh, Levi-Strauss developed the idea of dual codes of any society, that any society, sophisticated and complex, or archaic and primitive, uh, primitive uh, are dealing with uh, dual codes. But this duality is organized differently in one or other type of society. We are dealing with complex taxonomies, but some primitive societies uh, create um, rich taxonomy of the grasses, of the animals, uh, of the natural phenomena, and the uh, sophisticated complex society uh, create the rich taxonomies uh, with technical or mechanical objects. But in the same time, uh, the uh, taxonomies of uh, natural things and natural um, species uh, is reducing, is reduced. So the, the complexity of the uh, taxonomies of different society and these dual codes in the center of the society is the same. With, uh, um, whether we are dealing with primitive or with complex societies, uh, argues uh, Levi-Strauss. So we should not compare uh, the complexity and primitiveness of, of different kinds of society, but we should uh, insist on the correct description of the taxonomies.
So we are dealing with re uh, logos, with rationality, uh, with dual codes, and with taxonomy. And they are more or less the same being human. So it is a kind of enlarged humanism by uh, Levi Strauss that includes primitive people, primitive ethnic group, uh, archaic cultures in the realm of absolutely com uh, completed human societies, human being. That is a kind of humanistic attitude that goes against all kind of implicit racism, implicit uh, suprematism in any field of social comparison. So it is a main, uh, main, uh, main uh, idea, main mission of Levi Strauss is to defend the human diversity, the pluralistic attitude to the human cultures, and equality of ontological structure of any kind of society, primitive or complex, because primitive society are very complex in one sense. And the complex society, modern, actual society, are very primitive in the other sense. So dealing with the uh, complexity in technical sense, uh, they are very poor in the, uh, in the realm of uh, emotions, of personal uh, relations, uh, of uh, understanding uh, uh, and communication with ambience, uh, with the nature. So, uh, discovering the technicity that uh, modern men are losing the nature and the simplicity and the complexity of the nature. So this is a kind of uh, also um, uh, uh, equality between different kind of humanity and, and large humanism. Mm, uh, uh, structural anthropology of uh, Lévi-Strauss is accepted with all developed methods of his analysis of the society consisting from two parts of um, the, uh, two clans and uh, two parts that could enter in the legitimate marriages between uh, themselves uh, this also as a kind of manifestation of dual court of the civilization where the exchange of the women is the most important kind of uh, creation of the social relations between uh, uh, the same and the other, when the other considered to be the only possible source of legitimate wives for the, 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 uh, the clan. So that is a kind of dialectic between the same and the other in the context of the marriage. Uh, so uh, that was for Levi Strauss the basic principle of any human society. The rules that uh, define the, uh, the, 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 uh, the choice of the correct and legitimate uh, bride, uh, wife. So uh, also it is a kind of example that is a basic pattern for exchange of the gifts of the object and of the words. So uh, the speech, human speech, is a kind of symbolic interpretation of uh, human marriage. So uh, many other uh, problems were explored uh, and, uh, by uh, Levi Strauss and his method is, is uh, taken as central um, instrument to interpret correctly ethnic society, uh, archaic culture, and most simple kind of, of society. So, uh, for the ethnosociology, structural anthropology of Levi Strauss uh, plays the key, key uh, importance. So, his um, uh, studies of kinship, uh, the form of different um, uh, the, the different clans, uh, uh, dual organization, a dual code of myths, traditional myths of archaic society, all that is um, accepted as um, instruments of ethnosociological uh, analysis. The other important representative of these French sociological school is Louis Dumont. 
Louis Dumont that uh, uh, proposed uh, dual um, uh, dual form of uh, analysis of uh, human society. For Dumont, uh, Louis Dumont, there is two major kind of society, two, two major type, general type, uh, holistic one and individualistic one. Holistic uh, society is basing on the concept of the society as a whole, that was also attitude of Durkheim, and there is individualistic uh, attitude to society uh, as aggregational vision of society, as a kind of uh, aggregation of individual in individuals on different atomic atomized individuals so uh, there are two concepts the society as natural whole or holistic it corresponds to the pre-modern and archaic cultures and Louis Dumont studied Indian society uh, as uh, uh, as example uh, of uh, holistic society with very developed individuality because uh, Indian, Indian culture also knows uh, the ideal of uh, ascetic uh, life, of uh, complete uh, separation from the society by sadhu, by saint, uh, sacred, sacred uh, asset, uh, ascetic um, uh, person. But at the same time, this individualism of Indian culture and Indian ethic. Um, uh, doesn't go against holistic structure of society as a whole. So it is a kind of holistic uh, attitude towards society and individualistic towards individual. There's a kind of mixture of these two attitudes. But there are some completely holistic society, as Chinese one, for example, uh, according to Dumont, and there are some typically and purely individualistic society as modern European society basing on the presumption that individuals for the whole, the society. They are methodological individualism and methodological uh, holism that these two principles also uh, are absolutely uh, accepted and assimilated in modern ethno-sociology as its basis. We could also mention Georges Dumézil as uh, author of famous three-functional theory um, that uh, uh, ex explains uh, uh, the um, differences uh, between different myths uh, and historical, so, um, historical um, chronicles uh, on the idea that any narrative, uh, any uh, a story, uh, historical story or social or political story is basing on this three functional model. So any, uh, any society and above all any Indo-European society is basing on the three um, functions, uh, sacred functions, uh, uh, function uh, warriors and uh, producers. Uh, so it is a, uh, also that helps much to understand the forms and the structure, anthropological structure of traditional society above all. Uh, there is very important sociological André Leroy Guran that occupied by uh, mm, that, that was interested by correct ex, uh, uh, explanation of archaic uh, culture and science of the first, uh, uh, the first uh, man and uh, he was universalist. Uh, Roger Bastide, uh, that was ethno-sociologist that uh, started Brazilian society uh, affirming there are um, different, three different cultures, uh, African, uh, Amerindian and uh, European in the Brazilian society that shows the richness of uh, leveled, uh, different level uh, of uh, uh, complex society with particular mentality and particular 
distribution of identity. I would finish uh, this um, uh, this survey uh, of um, short survey of French anthropological tradition by uh, uh, Gilbert Durand, French uh, sociologist that uh, created his founder uh, of uh, sociology of imagination that also uh, serves much to understand uh, and to identify uh, some social processes on the level of the collective or pre-individual imagination uh, and studying this structure, anthropological structures of imagination, of uh, imagery. Uh, or Duran also helps to uh, understand better the um, creation of social forms, symbols, beliefs, practices in the primitive societies as well as in the complex society, uh, basing on the same uh, the, uh, on the same set of the typical um, typical. Uh, structure of uh, imagination that are common to the primitive society and the complex uh, and sophisticated ones. So uh, that uh, is all um, about um, uh, about uh, ethnosociological and uh, social anthropological schools. Uh, we could speak much more about any uh, of cited authors, but uh, we uh, will uh, borrow from. We will uh, we will mention uh, more uh, their methods and uh, their theories in the future, exploring the main uh, main subject of ethno-sociology and regarding different societies and different types of uh, and different stages of the societies uh, and different forms of societies. Uh, so we will continue our uh, um, acquaintance with uh, these uh, uh, four most important ethno-sociological schools. Okay, um, I have a, uh, a question not specifically about the French school uh, of social anthropology that you discussed, but about some of the questions that it raised, particularly um, the development of uh, what we call a logos, a rationality, um, uh, as a deviation from uh, mysticality uh, of an association of humanity uh, as part of nature. Um, this mystical participation. Um, and I, I have to wonder whether that this certainly um, explicitly uh, involves um, a part of the uh, capitalist system of exploitation that in order to properly uh, exploit involving the destruction of the natural that it required perhaps a um, we, we might not the correct word might not be a dehumanification, but uh, considering that man uh, in the earlier state believed that all of nature was possessed of, of animate souls, of spirits, perhaps a de-solification. Um, and uh, if that is Im implicit, what does it say about the current state of the world uh, of logos um, when we are facing uh, environmental catastrophes such as climate change and a whole host of other planetary environmental limits that our scientists tell us that we're facing, um, uh, where, where are we going with this? So, uh, there are two very important points in that. First of all, you are completely right uh, about uh, the origins of capitalism. For, for example, Georges Bataille basis on the concept of accumulation 
of the things uh, in the society uh, as a reason to create uh, social stratification, class differences and finally capitalist system. So when we stop to uh, give as a sacrifice something that is extra uh, product of us, so we, be, we, we are creating the basis for future capitalism and future um, uh, unbalanced society. So, um, uh, when uh, there is balance, there is no, no linear time, no actual age, no uh, logos, uh, no subjectivity against the nature. So, uh, uh, stopping to make sacred sacrifices uh, and uh, stopping grand zero sum of, of gifts so we are creating the um, premises, the principles, first principles of future, unbalanced and asymmetric society, and so logos and capitalism. So that was idea of George Bataille, basing precisely on the ethnosociological analysis. So uh, if uh, we don't destroy something new. So, if uh, we uh, will receive once capitalist, uh, anti-ecological, modern, actual uh, system of catastrophic, asymmetric, traumatic uh, crisis and um, modernity and post-modernity. So, uh, that started uh, long ago when uh, some people preferred or made decision to conserve something instead of destroy something in the sacred process of orgy, of orgy, of kind of sacred orgy. And so uh, that was a kind of uh, the first step to accumulate the, the goods and create the premises for unjust and completely uh, unnatural uh, social system uh, that destroyed the mystical participation and the uh, holistic society. Uh, and the second, uh, second point is the fate or destiny of the Logos. So the Logos was uh, in, in the beginning a very glorious idea to create something uh, stable and transcendent, in eternal, as a god, as uh, an idea, as eternity, that is above and transcendent, uh, above all, all nature. So it was a religious and philosophical uh, heroic act. But uh, little by little, this logos, heroic logos, transcendental logos, religious uh, um, logos, degraded. Uh, uh, to the rationality, uh, uh, first of all to the logic, Aristotelian uh, logic, after that to the rationality, after that to, uh, the, uh, to the logistic, logistic of uh, uh, organizing of uh, some magazine or shop, uh, so, uh, shop logistic, it was uh, a kind of uh, completely uh, pragmatical mentality. So a degradation to the positivistic, positivistic materialistic, materialistic uh, technical, uh, and in this in this sense, Heidegger affirmed that the techne, technical, uh, the technical is the fate, the destiny, because the first step to the uh, technicity was also the logos creation or uh, uh, imagination of logos. Uh, Advancement uh, uh, of logos was the first point of technical civilization, uh, including in the ta epochs when there weren't so much uh, attention given to uh, there were uh, there wasn't so much attention given to the technicity. Pro uh, so, but logos wo uh, was proto technical point. So now we are uh, we are dealing with the results and con consequences 
of this logocentric civilization. And at the same time, we are, uh, now we, we are seeing uh, the uh, total destruction of, 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 of the logos. The logos is degraded, uh, the, uh, the logos is dissipated, it is, uh, it is vanishing. That is a kind of post-logical, chaotic confusion between the rests and fragments of, of the logos. The great Greek logos is fragmented, atomized on the logema. That is the, uh, the next stage after logistic. It is lo logema, a kind of little, little logos, uh, smallest logos that uh, concerns only uh, personal, personal uh, interest of, of uh, little being, for example, brushing the teeth um, uh, and uh, having a, a good uh, with brand. So uh, it, it is a kind of um, uh, logema, the triumph of logema of uh, post, -individu uh, post uh, individuality, with it, his its uh, little uh, little concerns. So uh, as the um, the last uh, descendants of the great logos, its technical uh, technical uh, concern uh, of. Uh, uh, its physical shape, for example, or IKEA, uh, the journey, IKEA trips. Uh, IKEA tripping is a kind of last uh, last form of organization of the space, but on the level of uh, purely individualistic uh, scale. So I think that uh, now there is also the crisis of the logos. So we are losing it. So there is no. Uh, no, no more logos. There is something post-logical, irrational, but not pre-logical, mm -hmm. pre-rational, but post-logical. There are two kinds of disorder, um, uh, a kind of mystical participation that is uh, very, uh, very full and very rich, and post-logical degradation that is superficial and uh, without any uh, ontological and emotional dimension. In your work, as uh, you speak normatively about the need of a resuscitation of ethnos, um, does this then also uh, implicitly necessitate a reconciliation of logos uh, between man and nature? Yes, that is the main topic of my new book that is called The Search of Dark Logos. When I try to find out where were the first origins of the Logos, when the Logos was also mystical and uh, uh, the first stages of the manifestation of the Logos, when he was um, linked with the mystical participation, a kind of other Logos, the Logos, not exclusivist Logos, but inclusive Logos, the Logos that was more maternal than paternal, that was more feminine, than uh, masculine. That was a kind of a other logos that um, wouldn't be opposite to the nature and to the whole, that uh, would be other. That kind of continuation of high, uh, Heideggerian quest for uh, a new beginning of the philosophy.